everyone and welcome to another speed build. Today we're back in Brychester and I am making two townhomes. One is furnished for a bunch of Brychester students and then the other is furnished for Foxbury students. I've been wanting to make a build like this where it's for university students but it's not actually university housing so I'm a little bit less limited. I could actually make proper kitchens in this build and unlike what I did with the university housing buildings that I made, I went all out with the detail and clutter in the bedrooms. I got a lot more specific in terms of what Sims I saw living there, like I thought about their major, a little bit about their personality and background. And it was a lot of fun to furnish like that because with those university housing buildings that I made, I kept the rooms a little bit more generic because with how the game works with living in those buildings, it just made it a little bit more practical, but I wasn't really thinking quite as practically in that respect with this build, so it was just a lot of fun to make and go all out with those details. So currently I'm figuring out the roof line of these builds and I was doing something different with the roofs of each of the buildings even though their sizes are the same, their floor plans are the inside of the exact same. So I was taking inspiration from some of the decorative buildings that are around in the world when doing this. I was trying to get that look that some of those building ha buildings have where you have that round bit in the center and then it kind of curves up towards it. It was a little hard to do with using the roofing tools but I think I got something that was similar enough to it and then apart from that i noticed that those buildings just had two smaller gable roofs behind them which looks a little odd but i think it actually worked out pretty well with this and, th and then for the other one i just did more of a mansard roof or like a hip roof kind of a thing where you just have the roofing all the way around and then it leads up to this flat part and then i used a couple of those dormer items on the front and the back and it just looks really nice and i really like how it looks having those two very different kinds of roofs on these different buildings. I think it definitely made them feel a lot more separate than if I had done the exact same thing between the two of them. And I also made some differences between the two buildings in terms of their color scheme and how I put the wallpaper on them and the coloring of the windows. But currently I'm just trying to figure out the floor plan. And originally I made it so each of them were four bedrooms, but then I made it so the upper level only had one bedroom instead of two bedrooms because I've been doing a lot of those university housing buildings lately and those have a lot of bedrooms in them. So I just like I just knew I was not gonna be in the mood to furnish eight bedrooms, especially since, as I mentioned, I was gonna be going a little bit more detailed with these. So I figured six bedrooms total was something that was a little bit more attainable to do where I wouldn't really just get frustrated and sick of furnishing bedrooms by the end of it. And in case you're wondering which of these are supposed to be for the Brychester students and which is supposed to be for the Foxbury students, the one that's on the right here with the more Manser type roof is the one that is for the Brychester University students. And then the other one with the funky roof is of course for the Foxbury students. And I was trying to go for the look of having these be older English townhomes and I was trying to make it look like they're kind of crappy houses, you know, like it's a place where college students are living. so. I wasn't trying to make these look like the nicest to more most luxurious and up-to-date homes but despite that I was trying to make differences between the two townhomes that went with the ideas of the different schools because Brychester is supposed to be that more historical university and then Foxbury is supposed to be the more modern university. So something that I did in the exterior to show that was that for the Brychester building I kept the original color of the windows so that coloring with the beige stone around it and then the more brown color on the framing and then for the Foxbury one I changed it to the color where the stonework was more of a bright white and then the inside part of the window was black because that, that's something that kept with the look of the build it did, didn't differentiate from that too much but it did still give it a slightly modern feel you know like someone just came in with a coat of paint and tried to freshen up things a little bit but even though the Foxbury one is supposed to be a little bit more modern and up-to-date, it's still not that nice because the idea I had with the interior was that for the Brychester one, it has older stuff in it. You know, like it, it's been longer since someone's came through and updated things that done work, but the craftman, craftsmanship of what's in there is better quality. So it's older, but it's nicer quality stuff. But then for the Foxbury one, someone's come in a little bit more recently and by that you know like the 80s or the 90s and they tried updated them but it was kind of this stripping away of some of the traditional characteristics of the house and making it feel a little bit more basic so it's something that is in a sense more up to date but 
it's it's like an update that was made using cheaper materials so it kind of evens out to where they're both at an equal level of crappiness because i didn't want to make it where the brightchester house is super out of date and crappy and then the foxbury one is old nice and modern you know i, I want both students you know i don't want to you know uh you know show favoritism towards any of the schools you know i want them to be on the same footing so that was kind of my say my way of doing that while showing the differences like kind of the kind of something that aligns with differences between the two schools there wasn't quite as much that i could do to the exterior to show those differences but the foxbury one definitely does look fresher with the white picket fence and the white trim and the white and black columns and something else that i did to try to show which school each of these townhomes were for was coordinating the colors of these flower beds in the front with the schools. So I did find this nice bright red one for the Foxbury townhome, but there unfortunately wasn't a Brightchester green one for the other building, but I did find this one with gray on it and a kind of Brightchester-esque yellow on the inside of it. So I thought that went well enough. There was a lime green one, but I just didn't really like how that looked on the outside as much. And I mean, there are green plants on the inside, so that kind of goes with Brightchester a little bit. And I did want to try to put some sort of banner or streamers on the front of the building to show the school spirit, but none of the items really worked well. Like there is that one wall banner, but it just didn't really fit in nicely around the windows anywhere. And then if I sized it down to try to make it fit, then it just, it just looked kind of weird in the front, so I just decided to not really go all out with the school spirit on the front of the house. But back here, we do have the school-specific pong tables, and then we, of course, have some kegs because you got to have that at a college house. And then I was just trying to add some other miscellaneous things, and there really isn't any landscaping in these backyards. The closest thing to landscaping is that paved area right as you come out of the sliding doors, but these are very teeny yards, and I filled it with stuff, so that really didn't leave any space for plants, but... I mean, this this is a house that college students are living in, so it's probably fine that there's not a ton of landscaping to look after. And um, I think I got rid of that easel that I put in the Brightchester one. Yeah, because I think I just replaced it with more seating. So I was trying to add some miscellaneous seating. We've got some grills. The Foxbury one has a water balloon bucket and then that random towel there. And then I thought these awnings would be something really cute to put back here. But I could definitely imagine be, there being some dueling parties between these two houses and them getting mad at each other for throwing parties at the same time and they're trying to outdo each other and like play their music louder than the others. So I think it's kind of fun to imagine that there is this rivalry between the Sims living in these two different houses. But now we're on to the interior and I'm starting things off with the Brightchester house. So what I did was I just furnished the entire Brightchester side and then I went over and furnished the Foxbury side. That definitely is what made the most sense. So I was trying to, like, even though it's a little bit cheesy, I was trying to add some Brightchester colors to the interior here. So we do have this rather plain, kind of cheap looking futon here in the living room. And then we have that fold up Brightchester chair. I almost call it a table. I always do, like, this is, like, if you watch my Let's Folds, you know this is a problem I have where I always mix up tables and chairs when I say chair instead of table and table instead of chair. I don't know why I mentally do that, but it's something I've been doing for years and I, I just don't know why I do it. But anywho, we also have some yellow curtains to go with those Brightchester colors, which I do think, I think looks really nice. You know, I just kind of imagine them having a lot of school spirit and wanting to go all, go all out with their school colors. And then we also have a foosball table here in the living room, which I thought was a really fun idea. I can just imagine them sitting around there and playing foosball to together. You know, like this is definitely kind of a hangout area. And then we do have the school spirit banner right there above the couch. And then I'm just adding some miscellaneous clutter in here because I was trying to go with that stereotype of college housing being messy and things being mismatched. Cause I mean, I, I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I did live in a house with a bunch of other roommates. And things were very mismatched because you had people, like the furniture was just stuff that was pieced together from everyone. You know, everyone brings something new, like one person had a futon that they brought in and then someone else had a couch that they brought in and then someone had a TV stand and then someone else had the TV. So you just have all of this miscellaneous stuff that doesn't really go together. And that was definitely what I was trying to show in here. And I also used that bookshelf there the one that looks like it's held up by cinder blocks. I just think that's really fun. I like those more kind of grungy, cheap looking furniture items. I do wish we got more of that with this pack because um, I remember in The Sims 3, that university pack came with milk crate furniture. Like there is a milk crate sofa and a milk crate chair. 
And I think something like that would have been cool to get with this pack because the only couches we got were that one floral one that's actually pretty nice. And then there's that modern one that's also nice. So I was hoping, like something I was hoping to see with, with a pack like this was just that crappy bouton that's stained and who knows what stain it is on it because it was found on the side of the street and it was free. So someone just brought it in. I just would have loved to see that. But we're moving on from the living room now. So I'm currently working on the kitchen. And originally I had this in your face green wallpaper in here because I was thinking, oh, Brightchester colors, that's cool. You know, that felt like something that would be in a house like this where you're just stuck with, you know, it's a house that you're renting, so you can't paint. So you're just stuck with this, this awful in your face green color, but I ended up changing it because it just, it did not look good. And I know that was a point, but I could just not get over how it looked and I just really did not like it. So I ended up changing it to more of a beige color in a little bit, but we just got this whole mismatched dining room chair furniture, dining room chair furniture. We, we got this whole mismatched dining room chair thing going on here where once again, it's just furniture that different people pulled in. You know, we've got some flea market chairs and then we've got some fold up chairs and then just some other kind of crappy old chair that someone found. And then apart from that, I'm just adding in some different clutter items onto the table. I wanted to make it look like someone was sitting here doing a little bit of homework and then they just left it there, left that there. And then other than that, we just have some posters on the wall and then I also put some plants near the doorway. I thought that'd be really cute. And now I'm working on all of the kitchen counter clutter and I just stuck a whole bunch of stuff over the place, all over the place because I felt like that was something very fitting of this kind of a house where things are a little bit disorganized. Some roommates probably aren't the best at getting their dishes done. So that's why you just have a pile of pots and pans sitting there. And then there's also that one item that looks like an empty cereal box with some empty cans next to it. So, you know, that's probably recycling that someone just sat there instead of, you know, putting in the recycling bin or taking it out. And it's probably annoying their roommates. And then we also have some other dirty dishes on the other side of the sink because instead of sticking in the sink, someone just left it behind, left it next to the sink instead of putting it in, which, you know, is, is another thing that's probably gonna be annoying because I've discussed this before, but, Arguments like kitchen cleanliness is one of the biggest causes of arguments between roommates because some people like things to be very neat and tidy and then other people like things to be other people just don't care and they'll leave messes all over the place. Like I remember during my roommate experience one time one of my roommates was I, I guess he decided to cut up chicken late late at night and he didn't clean it up properly. And then the next morning, one of the other roommates got up early and saw that there's raw chicken all over the counter because this guy like got it on the counter. Like he somehow just got chunks of it on the counter and just left it there. So the other roommate decided to yell at the top of his lungs to wake up, wake up the entire house at 9 a.m. to come down so that he could find out who left the chicken there so he could yell at them specifically. And there's just other stuff where like, there is passive aggressiveness and people kind of being, you know, making comments about other people not cleaning. So yeah, it was just not a lot of fun dealing with that and navigating those different levels of cleanliness. But now we're on to the upstairs. So I'm just putting some stuff into this hall area here. I didn't really add too much to it because I didn't really see the students who lived here as wanting to go all out with furnishing this area. So we just have this random potted plant over here and there's just some posters on the wall and that chair over there in the corner and that's really about it so now we're onto the hall bathroom which isn't really the nicest bathroom as i mentioned i was trying to make things feel a little bit dated so we have this very dated looking tile and then that paneling which does work pretty well together and then for this house i did use these base game counters that were something that you know look like they're fairly old and but they're still at the same time kind of nice and then I did use the shower that came with Discover University and I just made it look like it was tucked back into the wall. I do really like that shower because I think the other standalone showers, like the other single tile standalone showers that we do have in this game, I'm pretty sure all have glass doors. So I do really like that we got one of them that has the curtains on it. And I also really like that we got that wall shower because that does make it a lot easier to kind of customize your own shower enclosures. So if you want, you can make this really nice shower enclosure, like two by one shower enclosure, or you can make one that's a little bit less nice looking. And um, I know I saw on Twitter that Simarki used one of just the regular curtains to make it look like a doorway into this like custom shower enclosure that she did. 
I'll leave a link to her Twitter in the description so that you can see what I'm talking about because I just saw her do that and I thought that was really cool. So that's something that I want to try doing eventually and getting a little bit more creative with that. But now we're on to the first room and this one I was imagining to be for a literature student. And I was seeing the Simu lives in here as being a little bit more put together. They like to have a matching set. They have some nicer furniture. They let, they keep things fairly neat. I mean, they have stacks of books on their end table, but it's kind of an organized mess. And I mean, apart from that, they don't have clothes all over the floor. They don't have a lot of messes. And I just think this room is really cute. And with these rooms, I was trying to make them so they were for Sims who were in the distinguished majors at each of these universities. So as I mentioned, this one is for a language and literature student. And then the other one that's on this floor is for a fine arts or art history major. I think it'll work for either of them. And then the one that's upstairs is supposed to be for a drama major. And over in the Foxbury building, I know I had one that was for a physics student who is in ro into robotics. And then I had another one that was for a computer science major. And then the other one I think was for an economy student. I'm honestly blanking on that a little bit, but I'm sure it'll come back to me once we're over in that building. I can actually see the room that I made. But I do want to take a break from talking about the build and give you a life update because over the past few months, I've been talking in some videos about how I got laid off from my job recently and how I've been trying to find another job. And I got some good news recently and I got a job offer, which I of course accepted. So my first day for that is going to be December 16th, which I believe is going to be the day after this video goes up. But I was just so relieved when I got that job offer because it's always a nerve wracking situation when you lose a job and you're unemployed and you just don't know what's going to happen with your food future and career because I had this fear that I just wasn't ever going to find another job or I have to take something that I knew I wouldn't like just to get something and my career would never go where I wanted to. I just to kind of be stuck. But it was it was just such a huge relief that I got this position and it was something that I actually really wanted and something that I think will be good for my career. Because when I first graduated from college, it took me over a year to find a job in my field. So I think because that happened in the past, I just had this huge fear that that was going to happen once again. But thankfully it didn't. And the position that I got was a robotics engineer position because my background is in mechanical engineering. So basically the job is going to be doing a lot of mechanical engineering like the stuff that I did in my other job, but it's eventually gonna to get to where it's a more advanced level of that. So the nice thing about this job is that there is actually gonna be opportunity for growth and to expand my knowledge a bit because an issue with my previous job was that I did get stuck at it. I got to a point where I was just doing the same stuff over and over again. And I think part of that was that the company wasn't really getting much new work and that was why I got laid off because they, they didn't have enough money to keep everyone hired who was hired. But this company seems to be in a better place, so I'm, I think I'll be able to learn a lot of new skills. I'll be able to do more challenging work. And the robotics area is an area that I've always been really interested in. So I just feel so lucky and so excited to have a job that is in that industry that I wanted to be in because I really didn't think that was going to happen. And in addition to the mechanical engineering stuff that I'm used to doing, I'm also going to have to learn programming, which isn't an area that I really have a lot of experience in. I did try to teach self teach myself Java and Python in the past, but it wasn't really much. And in this job, I'm going to be using C++, which I've never really used before. So that's going to be a whole new thing that I'm learning, which I'm also really interested in because I have always wanted to learn more about programming. So yeah, I am just really excited about this position. I really hope that I'm going to like this company and that this job's going to be good for me. But that does, of course, mean that I'm going to be slowing down on uploading videos. I'm not going to be able to keep up with the same pace that I've been doing. So it's going to go back to how it was before I lost my job, where it was every other day at the most. But then some weeks there might only be a couple videos up at that. You know, I'm just going to have to do what I can do. So I just wanted to give you all a heads up that that is what's going to be going on. And I have been working on pre-recording videos over the past week. So my idea is to have a video going up every other day throughout this week and to have all of those done before the week begins. Just so that way I can have videos going up without ha actually having to worry about recording my first week. But past that, there'll be an adjustment period where I'm trying to figure out how everything's going to work because my schedule's going to be a bit different at this job and my commute's also going to be twice as long as it was before. So it's going to be 45 minutes each way, which 
is not great. So yeah, that's gonna take up some time that I would have to make videos. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to upload less than I did before when I was at my previous job. I don't know. I mean, at least now I'm not planning a wedding, so there is that. So yeah, th there might be some, like some, a little bit more variation in the frequency of uploads as I'm figuring all this out. So yeah, just a heads up that that might be going on, but I just want to get back to talking about the build now. So I'm moving on to furnishing this room up here that's for a drama student. So I was imagining this as a room for a student who wants to become an actor. So they're kind of obsessed with that. So over here, I thought it'd be really fun to have a star mirror to go with that. And I do like how it looks with this, mirror, this dresser here, which I think was actually from Get Famous. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a Get Famous dresser. And then some other things I did around this room to show that was that I put some movie posters around it. Other than that, I added that microphone stand that came with Get Famous so that they could practice their acting. And I imagine that maybe they like to record themselves doing monologues so they can study their speech afterwards to see where they can improve. And I did also furnish the area outside this bedroom as a smaller hangout area because Initially, I was gonna add a plant to it and a chair and make it look nicer, but that wasn't really something that I felt was fitting of this house. So I just thought it'd be a little bit more fun to put this kind of ratty looking chair up there and then a smaller TV and a video game system. So maybe that's for the Sim who was in that drama suit room and they couldn't really fit that in their room. So they're like, okay, fine, we'll just stick it out there. But the Sim who is on that upper level does have a sweeter deal because they kind of have their own bathroom. And it is also the larger bathroom that's in the house, but it does also double as a laundry area. So that probably makes that deal a little bit less sweet. But we're done with the Brychester house. So now we're onto the Foxbury house. And you can see here that rather than using that really nice paneling wallpaper that came with Discover University, in this one, I use this plain kind of dirty looking wallpaper. So as I mentioned, like someone came in and they kind of stripped those more ornate details in an effort to make the house look more modern on the inside, but this is 80s modern that we're talking about. So it feels kind of, it feels kind of, or maybe more 90s, I don't know, but it, I think maybe it's more of like a 90s thing to kind of have that like plain white wall feel. But anyway, it's kind of like that stripped back, more basic sort of a feel, which I thought worked really well. And I did use that one red couch there that's kind of like that Ikea furniture, which I think does still go with the cheapness, you know, the cheap feel of this. And then I also use this coffee table, which is this palette one. I haven't used this yet, but I saw that. I was like, oh, that is so cool. We have got to use that in here. And I thought that plaid chair that's across is really fun. And that does, of course, go with the whole mismatch feel that I was going for in here. And I also had to put a lot of reds and yellow in here to go with that Foxbury School spirit. And when I was looking through the debug menu, I did find that megaphone item. So I just put that there on the coffee table because I was seeing that as something that they bring with them to games so they can be able to do cheers loudly. You know, if they're at a game at Brightchester University, they can use it to try to drown out the cheers of the Brightchester students where, you know, that works at a Foxbury game as well. And over here near the door, I just added in that bubble blower that felt like something fun to put into here because I wanted to do the same thing that I did over in the Brightchester building and just have this random activity type item in the entryway. And obviously I couldn't use the foosball table again. So that was something that seemed like it worked pretty well. So over here in the kitchen, instead of those nicer looking base game counters in this one, we have these ratty looking ones that came with, with uh, City Living. And that was something that I thought went with that idea of it being updated in the 80s or 90s because those definitely feel like 80s-esque cabinets because I feel like I've seen cabinets like those in houses that were done in the 80s before. Over here, I just did the same thing with having the mismatched chairs at the table. And something else I did that was on the outside that I wanted to mention was that I did take that one air conditioning decoration that came with Strangerville and I stuck it on one of the windows in each of the rooms because I just, I didn't see this house as having an air condition, having air conditioning in it because this world was supposed to be based off of the UK. And I'm pretty sure that air conditioning is far less common in the UK than it is in America. So I just thought that, you know, it went with that really well to make it look like they had air conditioning units in their windows to try to keep cool. Although I'm not sure if that's a common thing in the UK or not. Uh, yeah, if any of you who are in the UK could let me know that, um, yeah, do you commonly use air conditioning units to try to keep cool in the summer? Or is that something that you don't really find as necessary? Because I feel like I've heard that 
air conditioning isn't as common in the UK because it's typically cooler there, so it's not needed as much, but I could be wrong on that. It might also just be that it's an older country, so the buildings are a lot older, so it's harder to actually implement air conditioning in buildings. But yeah, I love to know like why exactly that is how it is. So if any of you know that, feel free to let me know in the comments. But we're done with the whole first level, so now we're on the second one. I've got that whole common area on the second floor done. There wasn't really a lot to it, it was just kind of the same thing I did in the other building where it's just posters and a random chair, and now we're onto the bathroom. So just kind of did the same thing that I did in the other one because this house does have a mirror layout to the other building. But of course, using the same finishes that I used in this building over here. So I tried to switch up the decorations in this one a little bit. I found that spray bottle item looking through the debug menu. And I thought that'd be perfect to put in a bathroom because I mean, it just looks like bathroom cleaner. And then we just got the other kinds of various knickknacks out on the knickknacks out on the counter there. So now we're on to the first of the bedrooms. And this is that one that I wasn't sure of. Like I could not remember what major I made it for, but I, I'm pretty sure it was an economics major. And I was trying to make it so this sim is all about the Foxbury spirit. You know, they're probably the one who brought in a lot of those posters and pendants that are out in the common area. So they just got this whole Foxbury bedspread going on and the yellow curtains and everything in the room is pretty much either red or yellow. Yeah, I think they were an economics major because I'm seeing that textbook that, textbook that I put on the bed. And it does look like it has coins on it. So yeah, yeah, I, am, I was right on that. Yeah, because I did use that one sign from City Living that's, um, it was like the money related protest. I can't remember which one that was exactly for, like which cause that was for, but I see this him as also being just very outgoing and very vocal. Like there's things that they care about and they're very vocal of those things. So they have no issue with protesting. And I can't remember which jobs the economics major helps, but it would be perfect if that actually goes with the politics group it probably doesn't i need to check that or maybe like maybe at least the charity organizer side of it because i could see economics maybe kind of going with that in a way but it probably goes with business career because that does make a little bit more sense so we're getting pretty close to finishing this room up now i did stick that one not so nice looking bookcase in here that one that looks like it's kind of dented and kind of scuffed up I do like that that bookcase. That's another one of those more grungy items that came with this pack that I like. But I think there's really only three items from this pack that are kind of like that. You know, that bookshelf, the other bookshelf, and the coffee table, and maybe something else. But that's it for that room. So now we're onto the room that's supposed to be for a physics major who is into robots. And I did think about putting a robotics lab in this room, but that just felt like something kind of weird to stick in a bedroom. You know, like what college student has money for this whole fancy robotics lab that probably costs thousands of dollars and would want to actually move it into their bedroom so yeah that was something that seemed very unrealistic but to show their you know to show that they liked robotics i did add some robot related items like i added these um parenthood school projects that look like they could be robotics like that's something that worked and then i added the chatterbot i don't think i added any of the utilibots into here Maybe I added one of them, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. I think I actually went back and added one of those robot vacuums in downstairs. I mean, that's not something that they made, but I thought that was something that worked, you know, like they didn't want to deal with sweeping. So someone was like, all right, we're just going to get this robot vacuum and then it'll clean. And then we don't have to worry about it. Although, <laughs> although those things like having, like we got one as a wedding present and they're nice, but they, they tend to get stuck places a lot. Like I have to keep it out of my office because it goes in there and it gets stuck on my rug or gets stuck under my desk chair. And I actually had an issue with it once where my, I had this like padfolio thing that I used for interviews to keep my resume and paper in. And it was this really nice one. And it somehow ended up on the floor in my office and the stupid robot couldn't see it. So it kept running into it, backing up, running it into it again because I was sitting there watching TV and I was like, why is there a noise like a lawnmower coming from my office? And then I go in there and the stupid robot is just repeatedly chewing on the spine of my padfolio so it tore this thing up so i was not happy with that because i i you know i knew i had to go out and get a new one when that was a perfectly nice one but yeah i mean other than that those things are pretty nice and handy to have around like i'm not complaining that we got it it's just kind of funny when you realize that you don't know where it is and then you have to go hunt through your house to find out what on earth it got stuck on like it has a tendency to chew up cat toys too and just get stuck on those 
Um, but anyway, we're on to the upper levels. So I just finished that common area out there. And for this one, I just added in a couple of chairs and a table with some mess on it. We, you know, just some clutter on it. And then there's a dartboard. And here I'm just working on the bathroom up here. So in this house as well, this is the laundry area. And then I just kind of kept the same floor plan for it. And I of course use the same counters and cabinets, etc., that I used in the bathroom downstairs, but I tried to switch up the clutter that was in here a little bit. So I grabbed the basket that came with Jungle Adventure and I was trying to see what I could fit into it to just make it look like there's a bunch of nail polish and various kinds of lotions and cosmetics in there. And other than that, we just got, um, just trying to figure out like the other decorations here. So we do have that cabinet just off in the corner there and a hamper and that cabinet about the toilets. I do really like that one over the toilet cabinet thing. Now we're on to the last bedroom and this is the one that's supposed to be for a computer science major and I was also imagining it as being for someone that's maybe also been into video games. So probably someone who's on the school's esports team and originally I was going to go with the blue color scheme for it but then I decided to go right back into the Foxbury colors and go with the red and yellow. Although. It's definitely not as in your face Foxbury as that other bedroom downstairs was. You know, like they don't actually have a lot of Foxbury school spirit type stuff in here. But for the desk here, I wanted to use this one gaming, you know, gamer type desk chair because that was definitely very fitting. And then rather than the laptop, they have a full on desktop. But I don't really have too much more to say about this build. So I'm going to go ahead and end the commentary here. And if you want to download this build, there will be a link to do so in the description. I'll also have other stuff in there, how to find it in-game. And that's going to be all from me. So hope you enjoy the rest of the video.